everyone, finally doing my answers to the questions that you asked me in the Ask Anika Anything video that I did a while ago. Sorry it's taken so long, but uh, it's been a busy, busy last couple of days. Hopefully you like it. I want to say right off the bat that I was not able to answer every single question. I'll do my best. I didn't want this to be a long, rambling video. Uh, there were some questions that were repeated as well, so you probably um, get your question answered in that regard. And who knows, maybe I'll be able to do this again. So I hope you like it. Please uh, put your comments below. It's always great to hear from you and subscribe, of course, if you have not. Thanks so much. Okay, so the first question I'm gonna tackle is about my makeup and skincare routine. That is a very big question because uh, there are a number of products to go through. Uh, however, I just wanted to talk about the fact that I use uh, some very not complicated products and products that I've been using for quite some time. First of all, let me start off with what I do for my skin. Uh, for washing my face and so forth because I've been using these products for a very very long time and I think I need a bit of an upgrade believe it or not because um, it's been a little while so this is the first one it is the Neutrogena oil-free acne wash I've used Neutrogena for my whole life basically so 32 years um, I wear a lot of makeup I use a Neutrogena remover to take off the makeup at first and then I use this after the fact I feel as though this is the only thing that is able to get my makeup off fully eyeliner everything. I know it's, you know, a classic, an oldie but a goodie, but this is what works for me. When I'm not wearing makeup, I like to keep things as natural as possible. I love the Desert Essence. This is the face wash in the original. I love the smell. Uh, I'm trying to transition to products that don't contain parabens and aluminum and that kind of thing. And so I'm going to be making a change soon, however this is sort of the first step for me so that's what I use. In terms of uh, creams and so forth, I use this, Aveeno, thanks to Jennifer Aniston because I wanted something with a little bit of sunscreen in it, something that had some moisturizer so I use this throughout the day and then at night I use the Philosophy Renewed Hope in a jar as well as my night routine. So that's what I do for my face. Um, in terms of my makeup. I'll start off with what I do for my foundation, first of all, and it depends on the day. If I'm having a little bit more of skin issues like I am today, I've got a few pimples going on, uh, I tend to use something with a little bit more coverage. So I really like the L'Oreal True Match. This is in the Nut Brown. I truly believe that I, I, I want to use products that are, are cheaper. I don't want to spend a whole lot of money on makeup and so I've always used mostly drugstore products. So this is that, what I use no, normally for some fuller coverage. And then really and truly I use this most often and this is the Tarte uh, in Tan Deep Honey. It's the Amazonian Clay and it's sort of the, the full coverage airbrush foundation. I really like this a lot. But as I said, right now, for example, I'm wearing this guy, the L'Oreal True Match. In terms of mascara and foundation, uh, and not foundation rather, and concealer, I use the MAC Select Cover Up. This is the guy I use, it's NC45. And then for mascara, I like the Benefit Their Real Mascara. I like this one, it's just black. I really like the the lengthening and, and it, it, it is actually making my, my lashes a little bit longer. I like Urban Decay eyeshadow a primer potion. I use this before I put on any eyeshadow and I really don't use a lot of eyeshadow. Uh, so this is for me a really, really good base to start. And then I always use the uh, Refined Golden MAC. This is the bronzer powder uh, in addition to uh, some blush as well. I use this for a blush. This is the whole lot of love MAC once again. And then this is Anastasia uh, Brow Powder Duo, Anastasia Beverly Hills in the Ebony. I use powder for my eyebrows. It's just kind of what works for me. I like that. In terms of the lip, I do a bunch of different things. I use a lot of MAC products. I use a lot of um, products from NYX and from things you can get at the the drugstore. Uh, however, right now what I'm wearing is a Jani Cosmetics in Mango. I really like it. It is a liquid matte lipstick and I also just put a little bit of cork 
to, to define it a little bit because it is a liquid and you need some structure. So I have the cork in a MAC lip liner as well. So, so those are some of the things that I use, some of the products I use for my skincare routine. As I mentioned, I am trying to use some more natural products. And so if you have any other suggestions for me, please let me know. Hopefully that answered your question. The other thing that I do that is connected to my skin is that uh, since, when was it? Since maybe April of this year, I completely cut out juice and any sweet stuff. Pop went a long time ago, but I only, only drink water. Only water. And of course, a little wine. A little wine from time to time, of course, is always accepted, but I only drink water. Uh, and that, I find, helps a lot in terms of my skin and my condition, my skin condition in general. So again, hopefully you liked that response. The next question is, what is your dream job or dream career? And you know what, for the most part, working at CB24, reporting, anchoring, and hosting was my dream job. It gave me an opportunity to meet so many different people, tell stories, impact the lives of others, and it was something that really genuinely meant a lot to me. However, as you get older, your sense of who you are changes a little bit. I jumped right into working in the broadcast industry even before I had graduated from Ryerson University, I took radio and television arts. In my third year, I was lucky enough to land a paid summer internship, those, those things don't happen anymore, but a paid summer internship at CFRB Radio. And then from there, I just went uh, working also, was the internship, then I did uh, radio, uh, anchoring, audio editing at CFRB, that turned into a weather broadcaster position at the Weather Network, and then from there it was CP24. So I, there was no break, there was, I often say that I didn't have an opportunity to truly get to know who I was. I came up from St. Vincent, uh, when I was, I guess, 17 or so forth. I remember I was 17 because I wasn't able to drink yet. And it was a big surprise to me because there's no age limit in St. Vincent. But anyway, I digress. But um, I, I felt as though I perhaps did not take enough time to get to know myself. And this is something that I often tell young people getting into this industry. Get to know who you truly are and then be that person every single day in every way. And the more you are in tune with, with who you are and what your passions are, um, the more fulfilled and happy you will be. And essentially somewhere along the way, I feel like I lost track of that and what I am in fact passionate about. I do want to continue to work on air. My dream job is to be on air, to be a host, to be a lifestyle talk show host. That is my dream but I was just a few steps away from that. I was in the arena, as I always like to say, but I was in the wrong seat within the arena, so to speak. And so I'm on my way, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do that in the digital sense, but there's also some self-discovery that has to happen as well. So who knows, that uh, dream job may in fact change. This question is asking, what was it like to make the transition from the Caribbean to Canada? And many of you know, I talked about it all the time on CP24. Certainly on the weekend, I would always say, well, in St. Vincent, this is what we do. In St. Vincent, they don't say that, we say this, etc." Uh, I was born in Montreal, did not spend a long time there at all, but I was always very, very connected to Canada in the sense that my father uh, lived here, even though my mother and my brother uh, and I went to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It is a tiny island in the Caribbean with a whole lot of spirits. The people are incredible. It's just west of Barbados. That's where it is uh, on the map, so to speak. And um, I had always, like I said, been very connected to Canada. We came here, uh, you know, twice, once, sometimes twice a year to, to visit family and friends because everybody else was up here. However, St. Vincent, I consider my home um, because that is where I spent my, my years sort of developing. I was there through high school and so forth, where you're trying to start to get to know yourself and some of my great friends, my best friends are still there. So, um, I moved back to Toronto to go to school at Ryerson University, I'm a proud Ryerson alumni, took rating television arts, lived on campus the entire time, and I feel that that campus living experience is something that saved me in terms of not making the transition as hard as it could have been. 
because a lot of the people uh, were from the Caribbean because they were you know international students who were living on residence who didn't necessarily have a home they were you know uprooted and living on campus so people like Lauren McIntosh and Janelle and Solange and Tahira and uh, one of my best friends Saran who I'm still um, friends with right now all these people have become great great friends of mine um, after having the opportunity to live with them. You know, um, one of my great friends, Samantha Ali, as well, met her at university. So that was a crucial, crucial thing for me, the friendships that I was able to foster, and that made the transition. It wasn't as hard at all, because I was around all these West Indians. It was as though I never really left. And then we kind of got to figure out Canada together, which was excellent. Once I got into the workforce, it was a little bit different. I talk a lot, and I have in the past talked about the I don't want to say just struggles, challenges when it comes to my accent because uh, I do have an accent. A lot of people say they don't hear it. Uh, it comes in and out. When I am delivering the news, it's not as much there. I always say I speak sort of standard English. If I'm speaking more candidly, you certainly can hear my accent. Uh, I, I, I feel as though it was forced out of me a little bit. Nobody ever blatantly said to me, listen, you got to get rid of that accent because everybody speaks like they're Texan, I don't know. But nobody ever said to me, get rid of the accent. However, just little subtle things like, oh, that's interesting the way you say avalanche or lesser Antilles. It's so interesting the way you say that because we say it like this. It was always little, um, little nuances that people brought to my attention. And I always say to folks who say, oh, why don't you talk more like that all the time? And I, to be honest, I'm not sure if I would have had as much success in this in this career I'm not sure you can weigh in on this as well for um, also your, your thoughts on that because some people I find sometimes it is a bit of a not distraction but people constantly are asking and pointing out the fact that you are different every time you say something you open your mouth oh you're different let me just remind you once again that you're different you're different and I suppose subconsciously that's what sort of pushed it out of me as well. That's one thing. The second thing is I, um, my, I'm very much a, a, a dual citizen, so to speak, and so my experiences uh, are double, and I'm very much a Toronto girl, very much a Canadian citizen, uh, but also very much a Vinci Caribbean woman. So I, I kind of live at the, the intersection there of those two worlds, and so Naturally, that is what my, my voice is going to reflect as well. So that was a big thing in terms of the transition. We talk about what the transition was like uh, moving back here to Canada. It wasn't bad in terms of a culture shock because we had always been exposed to North American culture in the Caribbean and I have lots of cousins and relatives and so forth who kept us up to speed. But the big thing for me, I would say, was the accent. Um, and. It's not something I struggle with, but it definitely was something that I noticed was kind of forced out of me. Other than that, the transition was fine, I, I would say. But lots more to discuss about in, in that regard in terms of cultural things and race and so forth when it comes to the industry, but that's for another video. Alright, so that's it. Hopefully I was able to get close to perhaps answering some of your questions, but please continue to visit my YouTube channel. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't. Visit my blog, AnikaElliott.com, where, believe it or not, I answer a lot of these questions as well. So keep um, connected with me on my socials and definitely comment as well. All the information that was mentioned in this video, any of the products and so forth, will be listed below in the comment section, so you'll find everything there. Thanks so much for this and stay tuned.